everyone. Welcome to our Six Figure Soul Summit for another great interview. I am Camille Miller, the founder and executive director of the Natural Life Business Partnership, a global online community for the soul-centered entrepreneur. Today we have with me Paul Taubman of Digital Maestro, uh, chief online strategist and founder. Um, why I chose uh, Paul for this interview is because he's been a longtime member of NLBP probably since we started. But on top of that, um, he tells this great story of his success and how he grew his business. And I'm going to have him tell you, but that is why he is part of this summit. Welcome, Paul. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Longtime member, first time caller. <laughs> So I didn't realize I tell a great story. I mean, that's you do. I'll I'll have to do my best when I tell my you story. You do. I hope it's great. I really do. It will be. Don't worry. <laughs> but I love. I the um, story. That's the question. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, everyone. I feel like everyone who who I say like is soul centered has this soulful piece of them has like this backstory. They did something else. We all started in corporate or we were doing something that just didn't make us feel great, right? It just wasn't what I say, like our purpose, right? We always felt like we had something greater about us. Um, and people use that or um, kind of thread that through their business, however they feel possible. Um, and then they grow, grow these businesses. And that's kind of like really what I want to show in this summit, that everyone has this core value. And then however they become authentic in their business is completely up to them. But you can be both, right? You can be completely authentic and make money. It's not really just about, well, if I serve others, I, I feel bad um, charging about it. So let's jump right in and talk a little bit about your story. Um, Tell us what you did before you were this chief online strategist, before you built your own empire. My empire. Your empire, if I love empire. that word. <laughs> will not strike dun, that. Dun, dun, cue that music. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. My empire is striking back. That's right. So um, prior to doing this full time, I worked in the insurance industry of all places. Right. The, the big, nasty insurance companies, those people would always remind me, oh, you work for them? Right. So um, 27 years in the insurance industry where I was doing IT work, meaning, you know, I get one system, to talk to another and share data and do all that kind of techie kind of stuff behind the scenes uh, sort of work. And when I was doing that, you know, coming from a technical background, my degree was in computer science and so it's always been technical. I really felt alive. You know, I felt much better when I was talking to our clients, right? The business people of the world. Right. So that, you know, kind of not forced me, but what I did is I actually went and learned all about insurance because very few people wake up and say, you know what? I want to get into the insurance. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Back then, I don't even think there were insurance degrees you can go for, but now you can go for risk management and other things. Uh, but anyway, so here I was working in the insurance industry and I didn't know much about it. Um, and so I actually started reading and going through all the different designations and certificates and that kind of thing that insurance people go for. So yeah. we were in the um, property and casualty. So home, uh, auto, you know, all that kind of business insurance. Gotcha. Um, so I actually, long story short, I went and I have my CPCU, which is kind of like an accountant goes for a CPA. Um, so I have that one of the highest designations as an insurance person. Uh, I can open up my own insurance agency if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but this allowed me to really talk the same language that the insurance people did, right? And they appreciate that because I'm not talking all the, the, my own technical jargon, I'm talking their jargon, and it made a great fit. So that's kind of how I sort of started with things. And, you know, I enjoyed it. You know, one of the things that you said starting out was, you know, what did, you said something about it wasn't before this, the job wasn't as enjoyable or what didn't, it wasn't my purpose or something like yeah, that. Yeah, your purpose. 
And one thing I, I did notice throughout various companies that I worked for, because in the insurance industry, it was merger acquisition, merger acquisition, and you know, adapting to the change. And quite frankly, it could have been a miserable experience. Right. Because all my friends, all the people, many of the people I worked with, you know, they get the tap on the shoulder and go, here's your package. Thank you very much. Go away. Yep. Yep. And from a personal standpoint, that's sad to see people lose their job. But then for me, I was like, well, wait a second. They just got this big check and they're, they're free. I'm taking on their work and I don't get any extra money. Right. So the good people kind of get retained and stay, which is good. But now there's all this extra work. So there were points where, like I said, it could have been miserable, but I think the joy and happiness that somebody feels really is inside and it's what you make of the situation. Right? We all have similar circumstances, but how we react to them and how we deal with them is what makes somebody who can you know, remain joyful as opposed to miserable. Yeah, adapt instead of like fight it. Exactly, right? yeah. and, and how you interpret it. So yep. that's just kind of one of the big things that I did. So. Fast forward um, towards the end of my, my career, um, again, it was merger after acquisition. It was training my supervisors because a new boss would come and he would go and then another would come in and just the way things work. I was like, this is, this is not what I want to do. Okay. So I actually started thinking of my job then as a fundraiser. It was getting me the funds to do the things that I wanted to do. Oh, that's an interesting way to put it. Okay. So you think about it, it's a fundraiser. It's raising money to, to move on. To yeah. 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 To be free. Yeah. That's an interesting way to say it. Okay. And about the same time, probably a couple of years prior to, to leaving, actually it would, it took me about a year and a half to, to make that transition. Okay. I had already started to work with people um, with, so Digital Maestro, by the way, we do website design, we do marketing, we do all that kind of, um, anything that affects your business online, typically we can help you with. Okay. Complete, even though it's with a computer, it's completely different than technical programming and things that I was doing in my work. So I would go take my vacation time and travel to a conference or an event and I'd get a speaking gig or do some training or you know whatever it was at these places from California, New Jersey, Houston, and like all over the place. And nobody at work, I didn't tell anybody. I told maybe two people, two really close people, two friends. So they had an idea I was doing this, but nobody else knew. And I was just- Secret uh, life. Yeah, it was my- <laughs> A lot of people do man. it. Yep, yep. Um, so I'd go off and I'd you know, do training on, fortunately, most of these events were like three day events where it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right, so, so no one knew. Thursday night. And then just okay. take off Friday, come right. back, maybe took Monday off. So people thought it was a long weekend. Um, but I would start to do that, do the speaking and actually started building up my business. So I would get clients and build the websites and do the backup and the maintenance and, you know, help them with all that kind of things. So come, it was about five years ago now. Um, I went into my boss and just gave my two weeks notice. And he was like, I did not see that coming. I was like, well, that's probably part of the reason, right? Right. If you have yeah. no idea that people are not happy, if you can't pick up on those things, and um, that's so, you know, we parted amicably, amicably. Um, my boss's boss's boss came for the farewell lunch, and he said, "So, where are you going?" I said, "What do you mean, where am I going? I'm not I'm not going anywhere." He goes, "Well, where are you working?" I go, I don't, I didn't interview. I didn't do a thing. And it's like, oh, you're just, wow. And it was like, poof to him. Like, Ooh, maybe we should check things out on the department and see and kind of do a temperature check. And so ironically, some things changed at my old job because of things like that. And right. um, I just kind of moved on and started to do this full time. Um, so I mentioned it was about a year and a half uh, between when I started to think about it because Originally, when I started getting into this, it was I'd do a project and I'd be able to take my wife out for a nice dinner. And then it was more projects and, oh, we can go on a nice vacation. And then one day I woke up and I was like, oh my gosh, I have two full-time jobs. 
right? Yeah. It was realizing that I'm doing all this work coming home and evenings and it was just too much to do. So I, I decided which one do I want? And of course it was the web work. Yeah. So I actually had a conversation with my wife one day. I said, you know, what do you think about if I did this web thing? That's what I called it. This web thing full time. <laughs> and her first question was, wait, what about insurance? What about, what about, what about steady paycheck? What about, right. I was like, okay, but yeah. not going anywhere, yeah. staying put. And at that point on, it was, as I said, about a year and a half to kind of get her comfortable enough to see what the possibilities are and you okay. know, what it would be like. And we picked the date and kind of had a running countdown. And as I got closer, I kept thinking, you know, this nice steady paycheck is kind of nice. And I started to think, Maybe I'll push that date off another month, another two months. Uh, but by that time, she would say, you know, I was thinking, when you do your own thing full time, you'll be able to do this and this and this. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess like she's over. You're doing it. Time. Yeah. I'm, right. I'm not. So, so yeah, that helped your date, week. Like, yeah. So it was, in a sense, it was accountability. Yeah. Right? Like, this is the date we picked. We're doing it. And so it's, that's the way it's been. So what was that first Monday like waking up and not going to work and just saying, okay, it's, it's all on my shoulders. That that's a, it's a big leap. And I know as an entrepreneur, I always wake up every day and say, okay, every day I'm unemployed. Like I got to make it happen. So that's an interesting thought. I never think I'm unemployed. Ah, right. I always think, look at all this work that I get to do. Okay. Look at all this work scheduled. Um, who do I get to talk to to see whom I can help? Right. So, I, I mean, I may joke around saying I'm no longer employable. Yeah. I, I can go back to something like that because I just, you know, I've seen, what is it? I've seen the future and I can't go back or I've seen the light or I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to go back to a, a, a jobby job. All right. Okay. So let's talk about how you scaled from there. Right. So now you you've left your security, right? the security of your full time check, which a lot of us, that's that's a scary leap. That's a big leap for a lot of us. You know, sometimes we're pushed into it. Sometimes it happens. But whatever it is, we wake up and we're like, OK, I'm doing it. It's all me. Um, so you have some clients, businesses, contracts. Yeah, I had some, so my original you. thought was my original thought was when I meet my salary that I was making okay. six figure salary. That's what I'm going to quit. Right. And I thought, you know what? I'm, That's I don't really want to work that hard part time to reach that. So yeah. I think when I left, I was about maybe 50%. Okay. Figure if I'm doing part time, 50%, I can easily scale it up. Absolutely. Um, so day one, it was just kind of continuing what I was doing. It actually felt, a little less burdensome because now I had you know, full time to do what I was doing part time. Yep. Gotcha. Um, and I realized that it's time to really, you know, work at this. It actually made it easier because telling my clients, I didn't necessarily hide that my, my web work was part time, but I didn't necessarily say I have a full time job and this is a side gig. Right. Gotcha. So it was never, yeah. I guess, never fully disclosure, but never really asked. Okay. So how long did it take for you to hire someone and start to scale? Yeah. So because I had now this full-time availability, I was able to talk to people during the day as opposed to just evening hours. Gotcha. So talking to people that way, I realized that I'm doing this extra other stuff which means I'm not getting to the, the things that I was doing and I need to hire somebody, right? And my first thought was, well, I can't afford to hire somebody. I'm not yet at the level that I wanted to be money wise. So I need to build that up so I can be equal and then I'll hire somebody, right? It was that classic, which comes first. Yeah. And I talked to somebody that said, you know what? You can't afford not to hire somebody because I was doing all the silly little things that I can outsource Yep. for you know pennies on the dollar compared to what i was charging right and right, so it was probably uh six months this is november so from april may june july august september october november yeah six or seven months 
Okay. When I hired somebody to, to help me out and I needed actually um, a website internal for me for some of the things that I was doing. So I reached out to some people that I knew who, who did similar kind of things. And I said, Hey, here's what I want. I need a website. I kind of gave some brief um, requirements, let them know what I wanted, told them I would pay for it, ask them what they would charge for it. And also let them know that if this works out, there's potential for future work. Right. So it was kind of like an audition, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. So I gave them the project. They worked on it, came back. It was great. Minor tweakings and all, which I expected. Of course. Um, and it was good. So the following month I needed something very similar. I was speaking for an attorney, a group of attorneys down in DC. So I just said, you know, the website we just built, just copy that and change it instead of, you know, the, the niche it was, make it attorneys, change the images, do all that. You know, what would that cost? So he gave me a quote on that. And I said, you know what, let's do this. Let's make you full time now. So 40 hours a week, I'll pay you, you know, every two weeks we pay. Yeah. And this will be the first project. And he's like, great. And ever since then, you know, he's, that's what it's been. Yeah. yeah. So now anytime something comes up or comes up, some work needs to be done. You know, I look at it and say, is this for me or is this for him? Okay. And fast forward, how, how many years has it been now? I've been in business now five years. Okay. Five and a half, five, so yeah, five years. Five years, I always feel like five years is a big year. Like people make or break in five years and clearly you've made it. So <laughs> yeah, ironically, I didn't realize I missed my five year anniversary by a few Aww. days. I, I remember walking up the stairs going, wait a second. I just had my five year anniversary. Oh, no. Nice. I missed it. Oh, well, it's good. Yeah, yep. This is mine. So um, can you share a moment that maybe you didn't feel like you had it all together or a moment when oh, yeah, you yeah, thought yeah, about can... quitting because that happens to all of us, right? We always think like, if I just throw in the towel now, <laughs> like, and I think it happens yeah. sometimes in scaling. There was, I remember definitely maybe a year, year and a half ago, I just thought, Oh my God, that corporate job was so easy. Yeah. I mean, just like I would do things that people would say, now we're changing our mind. So, you know, what I call worthless work, right? Mm -hmm. It was just, okay, we're done with this. We're not going to do that anymore. Or just kind of putting up with things. Um, but every two weeks, direct deposit, it was there. Yeah. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. So I thought, what if I went back to that and just kind of, you know, did this part time, what would that be like? And so it, it was the thought, it was a consideration, but like I said, that was a year, a year and a half ago. Here I am. We just kind of stuck with it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, what about, um, well, let's go to the soulful side since this is all about six figure soul. <laughs> I know you to be a very soulful individual. So when I talk about soulfulness or soul centered, how do you feel, um, either your faith or your spirituality or your soulfulness, how is important, how important is it in your business? Like, how do you use that to be authentic? Yeah, so to me, it's all about who, who I, who I feel I am, my essence, and what I want to put out there. Okay. So, most of the people, whenever I talk to people, you know, there are, and you may know people like this, or, or we'll just say the stereotypical type in the movies, the salesman who's you know on the phone, hey, I got a deal for you, let's do this, and right, 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 or or female, right? I don't mean to stare that stereotypical, <laughs> but they are you know, they pick up the phone. It's like, it's the game of how many sales I can get at yeah. whatever cost. Right. And I, I'm completely the opposite with that. I'm more about how can I help somebody? I'll have a call with somebody without any sort of um, pre predetermination of what I'm going to sell them, let alone, I mean, I have conversations lined up later this afternoon to talk to people. I have no idea what we're even going to talk about. It's just to meet with them and connect with them. Right. It's part of the, the 20 and 2020 challenge. Yeah. That's yeah. We talked about this just the other day on, in a, in our own community call about like closing and sales and how we do it. Cause I do think as a soulful person, we do it a little differently, right? It's more about the connection and the, I call it relationship marketing. 
So mm -hmm. it's really about having that deep personal relationship with okay. someone and, and, and genuinely checking in on them, not for the okay. sale, because the sale might be two years down the line and it's not about what I need today. It's about building that relationship. So when they're ready, they think of you. Right. Exactly. Right. So I think it's a, a different way to approach your business. And, and really when we, when you were asking about scaling, one of the big things that kind of helped me stay on track was in, in the beginning as a new business. And I think this really is true for many people as the work comes, you take it, you can't be yeah. cherry picking because yep. you need the work. Yeah, exactly. And you know, there was this one company. So I typically work with smaller companies, like up to five employees. Um, either they're just getting started or they're, they need to, to revise what they're doing. But there was this one larger company that came to me and um, the person said, you know, our website is terrible. Can you put a proposal together to, to redo it? So I said, sure. So I put the proposal together and he was kind of the middleman to the decision maker. So there's this, all this back and forth of, you know, maybe it's not the website we need. Maybe we need social media. What can you do for us? So I said, great, put that together. And it's starting to feel a little weird to me. And um, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this anyway, because this is a great opportunity, right? To me, it was a great opportunity, which to me meant I'm going to get paid a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> can't wait for this. Um, then there was more back and forth. Uh, and then it was like, well, you know, we might, might do any, some things differently. Can we get on a conference call with, you know, some other people? I said, absolutely. You know, they said, uh, they gave me their non-disclosure agreement. I signed that. So this was, you know, this was serious. So I get on the phone and they said, you know what, here's what we're thinking. Rather than you doing the social media for us, what we want is we want you to teach us how to do the social media and how to develop the strategy and how, you know, which platforms and really train us so that we can do it. And we want to take it to the next level. We want you to train us so we can sell this to our clients. And I thought, well, it's kind of like, <laughs> let me train my competition. Number one, number two, I wasn't really in the, in the space of, that's a lot of extra work to train a trainer. Right, right. Plus, you know, we are now on the fourth iteration of the scope of work of what it was. Originally was, let's build a website. Now it's train us to train our trainers to train somebody else. And at that point, you know, all this, all the bells and whistles were going off. And I was ignoring them because of the great opportunity. And at that point, I said, you know what? I don't think this is going to work out. I'm like, what do you mean? I said, it, you know, it, this work, this does not make my heart sing. I love and there was a silence. And he goes, what, what does that mean? And I knew right there because he didn't understand what that meant. This definitely was not a, a fit. And I said, I just don't think we're a good fit right now, but thank you for all your time and you know, good luck with things. Beautiful. And just, that was the end of that. And that's when I realized, you know, that's when you trust your gut. Yeah. And that's when you Empowering, just right? Yeah. yeah. And so, so many times, and you, I, I, I know that you've gone through it, but it's, it's also, I like to point it out in all of our interviews. There's a time also kind of like that, where you realize your self-worth, not only your self-worth, what you're putting out, your product. Mm -hmm. And many times in this arena, I find that people way undercharge way undercharged. So it's a big leap of faith. Again, I went through it, you went through it, we all go through it, of getting your pricing fair and reasonable, right? Being, you know, pricing. Now it's much easier, as you said, you know, when you have a business to kind of double it or, or increase it or whatever it is for you to get to that part. Can you um, just talk us through a little bit if, well, not if, when that happened to you of you know, getting that faith and that feeling of, yeah, I'm, I'm really worth this. I'm going to double my prices or I'm going to increase or. So it's all about the mindset. Yeah. I mean, it's easier to say this looking backwards because yes. when I was in it, I... it was like, <laughs> oh, I way. agree. <laughs> so day one, when I was my own business, 
to me, it legitimized, legitimate, it made it more legitimate. Okay. So before that, I was like, well, this is a part-time thing. I can't really charge a lot. A full-time salary. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Or just, I'm this guy on the side who's building somebody's website. I can't charge, you know, what somebody who's doing it full-time. Yeah. So just by saying, okay, this is me, you know, this is my business. Yeah. I'm worth it. I'm worth it. Right. And so that linked with, I need the money, right? It was kind of a desperation thing. I need more money. So let me see what happens. And, you know, surprisingly enough, I raised the rates and people said, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, each time you, if everybody's always saying yes, that's a problem. Your rates are too low. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, a, that's actually a, a good check. Yeah, you're right. But I think there's always people like, no, no matter how many times I've raised my rates, um, especially in the community itself, right now I do some personal work, but in the community, every time I did it, I held my breath until the first person bought. And then once the first person bought at that new level, I was like, okay, I got this. Like mm-hmm. someone thinks it's worth it, right? And it keeps going. But now uh, last February, when I doubled the rates, um, it brought in a higher quality client, right? And I also find that when people pay more, they respect you more. Oh, absolutely. Right. And they, and it's, it's kind of a more rewarding relationship. I like working with the people that pay more because I, I feel it's a mutual respect when people pay, um, a lot lower rates, they ask for a lot more. It's, yeah, the, it's kind the of like problems, crazy imbalance for me. Yeah, the problems, well, those who pay more realize the the value that you bring and they respect you and your decisions. Yeah. So for me in my field, when I I would price a website real low, they just felt that my my expertise was I don't know if it was unwanted or not not wasn't there. Yeah. So now when, you know, working with higher priced clients, they say, well, you're the expert. Go ahead. You know, what do you think? Do what you think is right. As opposed to the lower ones going, you know what? I want that picture just, just a little bit over more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That's like all the nitty gritty things. Very smart. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So um, I want to thank you for being on our show and sharing your success and your stories. If anyone has any questions, you could follow us on our Facebook page. We are going to have a Facebook page with this summit and you can talk or ask Paul questions. If you have any of that, you can just continue the conversation. Let us know what you think about this great interview, other great interviews. And if you have any uh, questions or comments, we appreciate it. So thank you, Paul, for this great interview. Thank you listeners for um, being a part of it. And please let all of your friends know about our Six Figure Soul Summit, doing good and making money. Thanks, Paul. Thank you.